Minister, uh, Minister, Minister Can you please can you come, like, to the mic? Sort of come to the floor? Come, come, come to the floor, right over here. Right over here. Yeah. Can you please oh tell us yeah. what so happened? First, just, just, just before uh, you all start clamoring uh, for uh, answers to questions, um, let me say a few things with regards to uh, the Bernardo affair. Uh, as I said yesterday in the House of Commons, uh, I was informed personally on May 30th. Um, when I found out about his being transferred to a medium security institution, I took uh, the action that was necessary, which was to contact uh, the Commissioner to express what I thought were the completely justifiable uh, concerns of the families of Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen French, uh, to express uh, you know, my concerns on behalf of Canadians that uh, this decision would, would, would spark um, the backlash that you now see. Um, in addition to that, I've also had the opportunity to speak with um, the representative for uh, the Mahaffey and French families. Uh, to, to ensure that he knows that I'll do whatever I can to support them, as no doubt this has caused them great anguish and grief. With regards to the timing of when I was briefed, because I know this has been the subject of, of a lot of intense uh, scrutiny over the last number of days, uh, look, it, it, it is uh, very clear that I should have been briefed at the time, um, and that is something that I made abundantly clear uh, to my staff. And as I said yesterday in the House of Commons, uh, I have taken the corrective uh, steps uh, to ensure that that does not happen again. Uh, I think more importantly than that, though, the uh, new directions which will be coming from my office to the Correctional Service of Canada will ensure a number of things. Um, first uh, and most importantly, that victims' rights and sensi sensitivities are appropriately taken into account when uh, any decisions uh, regarding inmate uh, transfers are made. Um, that's important. Uh, secondly, that uh, I am uh, directly briefed in cases that are similar in terms of their being high profile or where they're dangerous offenders. Uh, and third, and again, most importantly, and out of respect uh, for those who could be re-traumatized by these decisions, that victims' families are notified. And the current lay of the land is that there are protocols in place that do allow the Correctional Service of Canada to navigate around what are legitimate security concerns, what are legitimate privacy concerns, where inmates are transferred to minimum security institutions, but not medium security institutions. And so uh, we have taken the concrete steps to rectify that with this direction. Uh, and I will be working very closely uh, with the CSC. So uh, this, this is, uh, I think, a very good and thorough summation of, of, of the actions that we've taken today. How is it all? And I'll be happy how to take it, more questions. How is it at least? That, it, how is it credible that all of the most senior sorry. staff who are paid for by taxpayers and government and the PCO and the Prime Minister's office and your office knew, but somehow you and the Prime Minister were only told after the fact? How is that in any way credible to the average person who goes to their job and does their job every day? Okay. First of all, uh, let's all take a breath. Uh, and I want to be responsive to your questions. What I said was is that I would be coming down to take more questions uh, in this afternoon. But you said what I would say, and then you didn't cut your office we waited I, for yeah. five hours what, for you yesterday. Right now, what I well, I'm here right now, and I will be here again, absolutely, tout à fait. But I agree with you that there uh, is a challenge there, which is why we have taken steps to address that through corrective actions internally, as well as uh, by uh, making sure that the CSE works very closely with victims' families going forward. Why didn't your staff tell you? Why didn't your staff tell you? Why didn't your staff tell you? What's the explanation? We, il faut, il faut montrer un peu de respect. Oui. Donc, comme j'avais mentionné, je vais prendre action concrète sur les questions de mon équipe. Uh, J'avais uh, dit à uh, tout le monde que oui, c'est absolument nécessaire que j'ai reçu les brevages uh, à l'heure actuelle quand il a reçu l'information. Mais en plus, j'avais uh, publié un nouveau direction ministérielle uh, pour, uh, pour assurer que les CC vont travailler ensemble avec des, des familles de victimes. Why didn't your staff tell you? Why did not? Is it standard operating procedure at your office that you are kept in the dark? And will you let anyone go in response to the handling of this? Of course not. And you know, my job as the Minister of Public Safety is to make sure that we are identifying issues where there uh, are challenges on information flow. And so what I have done in each and every one of these cases is to be responsive to those challenges by issuing ministerial directives to clarify so that we are strengthening our ability to get the information that we need. So that has been done certainly uh, in the case of Bernardo through the issuing of a, of a new ministerial directive. As far as uh, internal uh, matters, I've dealt with it.
What is that? What does that mean? Why can you just have to be? Why can you just have to be? Minister, minister, what is the explanation? If it's not to keep you in the dark, what's the explanation? So, again, I can not answer all the questions when they're coming at the same time. So why didn't your staff tell you? What's the explanation? What was the explanation from your staff as to why they didn't tell you? The short answer is it is unacceptable. Uh, and my job is to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And That's the way not to do answering that, the question. Why did it happen in the first place? It's not your first day in cabinet, right? Sorry. You're many is years Bernardo into cabinet. It's not a new... Bernardo going back to maximum security or not? Going so, to maximum security so or not? I'm going to come back to that question. But first, what's important is that uh, these issues are identified and they're corrected. And so that is what I have done with my team to be sure that there is uh, no further breakdown in information flow. It is important that I get those, uh, those briefings in a timely manner. That is made abundantly clear. More importantly than that, uh, back to the question that was posed, uh, I believe that uh, the decision to transfer Paul Bernardo to a medium security institution does not uh, sit well with Canadians because it is in the front to the victims, in particular of Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen French, and that is why we are going to support them. We're going to make sure that victims' uh, rights are at the center of these decisions and that going forward, victims are notified in a timely manner before those decisions are taken. So taken. will he be moved back? Je vais, je vais rep- okay. I will, en français, oui, oui. Je vais répéter en français, puis je vais prendre plus de questions un peu plus tard aujourd'hui. So there will be another opportunity for us uh, to speak again. Um, comme j'avais mentionné, oui, c'est très important que euh, j'avais adressé les défis à, au mon bureau. Uh, ça, c'est exactement ce co- que j'avais fait hier avec mon équipe. Les actions co- uh, de correction sont complètes. Et en plus que ça, on va travailler ensemble uh, avec l'SSC pour uh, supporter les familles de victimes. Sous la question substantive de M. Bernardo, je pense que uh, c'est très clair que euh, la décision est offensive à les familles de, euh, de, de Leslie Mahaffey et Kristen French. Euh, et en plus que ça, euh, il, il faut euh, prévenir des, des autres incidents, euh, incidents comme ça, parce qu'il faut prendre une approche euh, qui mette les voix des victimes à la centre des décisions euh, qui s'impliquent des délinquants euh, et euh, Why is that? Are you going to be issuing a ministerial directive?